Well, howdy. What? What did you say? Looks like I'm in the middle of the road. Yeah, just because I can. <laughs> so uh, here's what's happening right now. That's right. We're leaving Nevada. How about that? And we're heading into Utah to find out what's the latest on the mysterious missing resupply box. And so let's see what Ely, uh, Ely. <laughs> let's see what uh, Utah has to offer. You know something? When I left Baker last night, I was thinking, well, oh, you know, it's kind of nice to uh, be able to uh, camp right on the border with uh, Utah and Nevada. You know, I have like my head in one state and my feet in the other. I didn't end up, end up doing that because uh, there was a nice gravel pit. I'll show you a picture of this gravel pit. There was a nice gravel pit that I uh, stayed in about half halfway through, but it's also a good thing that I didn't come to camp here on the border because uh, <laughs> I would have been camping on a road or else underneath the barbed wire fence. Same thing over here on the other side. But you know, it's, on the, it's interesting on these state signs to uh, see the different stickers that uh, people put on it. And look at this. Squaw is always going to live in memory no matter how they try to change the name. Squaw Valley, that's it. It'll always be Squaw Valley. Squaw Valley. <laughs> so uh, even though my uh, time in uh, Nevada ended with a hiccup, and also a couple uh, hiccups along the way in Nevada, it's, uh, Nevada's been a good place, you know? But hopefully you've seen Nevada as you've never seen it before, you know? I think a lot of people think of Nevada as uh, sagebrush and just flat open spaces. <laughs> you know, Nevada is the most uh, mountainous uh, nation, uh, state in the nation. That's for sure. And you know, it also took uh, three weeks longer to get through Nevada than I expected because I had that unexpected stay in uh, Fallon for five days waiting to swap out the boots. And then I had... Uh, that unexpected stay in uh, Carver's, uh, what was it, four days? I think four days, might have been five days, to wait out the weather. And then in Ely, uh, even though I was only gonna spend three days there, <laughs> I ended up just be lazing around and uh, uh, doing seven days because I thought that that was gonna be my last uh, stop for another 150 miles till I get to Milford. No, 170 miles. And then, you know, all the, all the uh, snafu with the box here, so I ended up staying six days in Baker. So it's about uh, an extra three weeks in uh, Nevada, which is not a bad thing. Nevada's a nice place. I'll come back, definitely. So onward to uh, the Garrison Post Office, just about a mile ahead here, and keeping our fingers crossed that the, uh, <laughs> the box got there. It left Fort Worth. <laughs> it left Fort Worth, Texas, um, 48 hours ago. From Fort Worth, it had to go to uh, go back to Las Vegas to the Sorting Center. From Las Vegas, it had to go to Beaver. Beaver had to go to Garrison. So. Uh, I may be a day early, but we'll, we'll see what happens. And actually, I was just thinking this past couple minutes here, it maybe took me an extra month uh, longer to get through uh, Nevada. When you add on the extra three days it took to get through the Arc Dome wilderness, and then the extra two days that I got behind on uh, in Mount Jefferson, because of that uh, snowy stuff. So uh, let's hope that uh, Utah and Colorado will be just a straight shot so then I get to uh, Oklahoma in, uh, let's see, let's stay up. Get to Oklahoma in uh, 
yeah, this is really gonna happen. Get to Oklahoma in one month and 29 days. <laughs> Let's see what happens, huh? That'll get me back on schedule. Right, sure. <laughs> well, guess what? It's now six days later. I had to go back to Baker because my box wasn't there at the post office in Garrison. Had to go back to Baker and uh, wait six more days. So I finally got here after looping around the Fort Worth Distribution Center for a few days. Finally got out to Las Vegas. And from Las Vegas, it finally went to Beaver. <laughs> from Beaver, it finally got here to Gil um, Garrison. So we're on the move. Got uh, We're going to Milford. And Milford will be about a week. It's about 90 miles, so that's about 15 miles a day. Uh, temperatures in the 90s. So that's why I'm doing 15 instead of trying to do 18. But I think what I'm going to do is get up about 4 o'clock in the morning. And there's the very first hints of light that start to appear about 5 o'clock in the morning. So I'll just uh, start uh, walking about 5 o'clock in the morning, go uh, 5 or 6 hours, and then uh, wait out the heat of the day. And then hopefully, like it's trying to do right now, it will cloud over towards the latter part of the afternoon. And then uh, can bang out another couple hours. So that would, uh, that would theoretically make me able to... Uh, maybe get 18 miles a day. So we'll see what happens. Yesterday clouded over nicely, cooled off really well, a nice breeze while I was in Baker, <laughs> but not today so far. All right, well, here we go. Getting ready to turn down Pine Valley Road. You see anything down there? I didn't think so, neither do I. <laughs> All right, let's hit it. Well, so far so good. It's been about an hour, uh, a little bit over an hour. I think I'm on about a three mile an hour pace. So I guess uh, <laughs> nothing happens by chance, right? In that two week uh, forced vacation of camping uh, has helped out. Um, clouds are helping out too. So instead of being 99 with direct sun, it feels like it's maybe about 88 with uh, very little sun and uh, a slight breeze. I think up ahead I might spy, I spy a, uh, maybe a large bush or a, uh, a tree that I can rest under the shade. I don't feel like doing it because I've got this big burst of energy and this exuberance to just keep on Zoom, zoom, zooming, but uh, in conditions like these, you got to force yourself to uh, take breaks so they don't overheat, you know? So uh, i got plenty of water, so no problem there. So it's just, uh, it's just like uh, <laughs> pulling back on the bit so the horse doesn't just keep galloping. So at this pace then, um, I don't know, maybe I'll make Milford in five days instead of six or uh, four and a half days instead of five, whatever it is. All right, well, it's cooled off nicely. I had a uh, nice half hour break. Been about 2.7 pace, so I think uh, I'm probably just gonna go about another two hours. And I don't know if you can see this over here. It's mostly Virga, but uh, got some rain dropping out there at Garrison, and the wind's coming this way, so I might get a few sprinkles. There's good old Baker. So let's see what another couple hours brings us. And then uh, <laughs> see if I can really uh, discipline myself to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, sure, right. Uh, 
We'll do it. Well, I've got about 20 minutes to go. Uh, I'm taking a quick break, but uh, I got uh, take a look at this rain over here. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, right there. It's uh, <clears throat> there's lightning in there, so I gotta guess. Guess I should be careful. <laughs> Maybe I won't plant these sticks next to me tonight. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's quite pretty watching this, watching this rain. At first, it was earlier today. It was all over here with some lightning. And then it stopped a little bit, just became some virga. Now that we're getting a little bit later, it's about seven something. And now it's behind me. Oh, did you see that? How about that? Uh-huh. Maybe I better get a move on here. <laughs> Put some distance between me and the lightning. The wind's coming this way, so I'm guessing the rain will stay that back there now. If you don't hear from me again, or if I got a nice big... Did you hear that? I have a nice big uh, burn mark, then you know what happened. <laughs> Alright, here's where we're calling home. Nice uh, sunset at the end of the day, and nobody around, huh? No cows around. No nothing around. It's very quiet, except for the um, the breeze and a couple birds uh, just kind of chirping away. Oh, and you see, I got a gallon of water. I'll uh, tell you about that in the morning. I just happened to find it buried in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I wonder how that happened. See ya tomorrow. Good morning. What do they say about red sky in the morning? Red sky in the morning, sailor's warning. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. Well, as you can see, it's uh, pretty early in the morning. <laughs> It's about 4.30ish, and my uh, plan is to get out of here by 4.30. <laughs> it didn't happen. But, uh, so the, uh, what I want to do is uh, get out of here and just walk before the sun comes up. Sun's supposed to come up in about 40 minutes. And bang out about five or six hours before it gets hot, and then uh, hopefully find uh, a lone tree out here somewhere. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Got to find some shade somewhere, wait out the heat of the day, and then, uh, I think, I, like I said yesterday, then maybe uh, do another couple hours after the sun goes down. It got some rain last night. I was laying here, and all of a sudden, I was thinking, oh, no, what do I do? I was so lazy, I just let it rain on the seat and bag. I did break out the uh, umbrella, um, so I got some wetness, but I'm all dry now anyway. Yeah, oh, well. <laughs> So uh, let's get a move on, and uh, actually I'm going to eat something first, and then uh, get going before it gets hot, hot, hot. All right, here we go. <clears throat> um, earliest uh, start I've ever had. It's 5.45. I'm still on Pacific time, even though I've crossed the uh, time zone. And the sun's already out. It's already getting warm. We're in a place called the um, Ferguson Desert. And <clears throat> the goal today, a little over 15 miles, um, be a place called X Knoll, that's E C K S, X Knoll. There's a cattle pond up there, supposedly. So it's uh, 10.35. <laughs> I was going to take a break here, but man, it's fly city, fly galore. I mean, they're all covering my backpack. <laughs> they're covering me. I had to put my sleeve down. But I want to show you something. I told you yesterday I'd show you about the uh, water situation. So this is a pretty dry section. There was a uh, cattle tank out that way that was um, dry. And uh, going up this way over to Eck Knoll, there's uh, 
possibly a cattle pond. But in this section, uh, there's a few uh, water caches that were dropped um, for hikers. And if I can show you where, oh, here it is. So you may be asking who dropped these uh, water caches. Uh, some people that have come through here before, they've uh, driven the route uh, themselves and have dropped off uh, food and water in certain places. But uh, on the American Discovery, the American Discovery Trail, there's a uh, coordinator for Utah, and uh, he's uh, buried some caches for the hikers coming through, uh, myself included. So there's um, there were seven bottles here. Uh, I took one, and then I brought one from the previous cache yesterday. So there's an empty bottle right there. So there's six uh, waiting for hikers uh, coming through. Um, I think they're all mostly coming uh, westbound. There might be one person coming eastbound behind me. I don't know. So that's uh, that's how you get water out here in the uh, out here in the Ferguson Desert and in the Wawa Valley. So, like I said, um, there's a cattle pond coming up in about for six miles, and then after that, there's a ranch called the Wawa Ranch. And then after that, if there was no uh, if there was no cash, there's no water between Wawa and Milford, and that's um, I want to say 40 miles at least. <laughs> so wouldn't get through here without that. Maybe 50 miles. So thank you very much, Bob Palin. Thank you very much, American Discovery Trail. And let's get out of uh, <laughs> get out of Fly City here. And uh, yeah, I've got it out there in the middle of the road because oof, here on the side of the road is where the flies are. So I'm going to be carrying my backpack on my back, a bottle of water in one hand, and I got the um, umbrella out because it's starting to get hot. And uh, maybe it'll go about another hour, see if I find some shade. I doubt it. All right, well, <clears throat> it's getting towards the end of the day. It's three something. I had a nice uh, two hour break during the middle of the day. And then the clouds came and uh, really uh, um, lessened, the, uh, lessened the sun and the intensity. So, um, going down this way, going to check out a, a cattle pond to see if it's dry or not, or wet or not, full or not. Uh, I could talk. And then, going to probably uh, pull up uh, somewhere. The other side of that, that's back snow, S-E-K-S, I told you about, big snow. And then um, tomorrow, take a look at that one. It's kind of interesting looking, huh? That's called Crystal Peak. So we're going to be going um, on this side of it, passing by it tomorrow. It's kind of weird, huh? Just that crystal thing. In the middle of all this. And the uh, first vehicle I've seen all day is coming up the road from behind me. <laughs> uh, he stopped, they stopped, and uh, he said, Ah, I, I couldn't tell what that was from way up ahead. Then I saw somebody walking. He said, Who's walking on this road? Crazy. So let's get a move on. Uh, oh, and they went up that way somewhere. No idea where. All right, let's go. Okay, let's see if our cattle pond's got some water in it. It sure does. It's kind of yucky though. Not yucky bad, but it looks like it's got uh, uh, sediment, uh, maybe alkali. Hmm. Let's go take a closer look. Well, here it is. It's got a little. Uh, what would you call that? A milky, uh, a green milky uh, tinge to it. Looks like there's a lot of alkaline in there. Let's see. Uh, okay. Well, it's definitely a gritty feel. It's not a uh, slippery feeling. I think I'll pass. 
I've got five liters to get me another. Uh, I think I got to go 10 miles to the next water. So my original plan was to uh, camp about a mile down that way. Um, it's a different uh, ground. There's a lot of ants here. So hopefully they aren't up there. Otherwise, maybe I'll just uh, get some dinner and let the sun dip behind this hill. Oops. Let the sun dip behind this uh, knoll here. This X knoll. And then uh, go another hour or so. And then uh, just hit the, hit the hay early so they can get up at 3.30 in the morning. And get a move on by 4.30. Huh. Think I'll be disciplined enough? Yes? No? See what happens. Okie dokie. Two miles, one hour, whichever came first. It was two miles. So, uh, sun's setting. We got about another six minutes. And got the camp all rolled out. Yep, that's all it is. Roll out the pad, roll out the sleeping bag, and use the pack as a pillow. So I'll uh, have a comfy, comfy night, albeit a short night. No rain tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Guten Morgen. So, uh, good news. I'm starting out earlier than yesterday. It's 5.53. How about that? <laughs> and the bad news is... <laughs> I uh, woke up at 3.30, and then I got up at uh, <laughs> after 4.30. <laughs> but anyway, it also, I think it's going to be a warmer day, because the uh, wind is still, and the sun always already feels somewhat warm. Oh, well. So Crystal Mountain is the goal. Doesn't look like much now in the morning. So let's see what it looks like close up. Just came across this guy, side of the road, sunning himself. He didn't want to have anything to do with me. Looks like he's about three feet long. Looks like he's uh, well fed. And uh, here's Crystal Mountain over here. Crystal Mountain is uh, gets its name because it sparkles, and you can see also its uh, light color. It's all shiny, sparkly because it got a lot of quartz up there, as well as some other uh, shiny, sparkly minerals. Doesn't really look a whole lot. From this angle and with the sun, but uh, I think you can tell how whitish it is compared with the rest. And when I was coming, uh, when I was coming through the shortcut, <laughs> there's a lot of sparkly stuff um, in the dirt down there. I don't see any here on the road. I think I've mentioned this before. It's the kind of place I'd like to have, be able to just see the long ribbon of dirt road way off in the distance. You can see somebody coming for uh, an hour before they get there and get lunch or dinner ready before they get to you. <laughs> it's pretty, really, really pretty. All right, we're continuing on. We're going to go up and over uh, Crystal Peak Pass here, and then it'll be downhill pretty much the rest of the day, I think. Well, this has been a bit of a climb. I stopped back up there, back down there to pick up a cache of water, and uh, still got Crystal Mountain off to our right here. And uh, look, we're entering the Wawa Wilderness. And uh, a couple of days ago, I mentioned to you. Uh, we'll be getting to the north end of the Wawa um, Valley right after this pass here and it'll be all downhill till we get to uh, Wawa Ranch 
and then I think it's flat for just a little bit and then the climb up to Frisco Summit. I think there's a ghost town or maybe just uh, the vest last vestiges of ghost town. And then from Frisco Summit it's downhill to uh, Milford. So we have uh, one night, two nights, three nights, and we get into Milford on Thursday. And then uh, I think I'm just gonna pass, push through Milford. It's 24 miles from Milford up and over the mountains to Beaver. And then I'll see how I feel. <laughs> you know, after this uh, two week forced vacation in Baker, I'm wanting to try to make up some time through Utah. But uh, I guess maybe that's not the wisest thing, so we'll see. How many uh, pictures of Crystal Mountain can I take? <laughs> but I thought I'd do it because uh, we're on the way down. And um, we'll get down there pretty much to the floor of the valley there. And then we'll take a right and uh, head on down to Walla Ranch tomorrow. It's about 11 o'clock and uh, we only have about uh, 11 miles to go. And yeah, you can see I got the umbrella. So the sun's hot, but in the shade, it's been relatively cool. And I made the stop back there, it was nice and cool. Had a little breeze, so I'm just looking for a little breeze on this side. I'll just make a lunch stop of a couple hours and then uh, bang out the rest of the day since the sun will be behind me. And we're going downhill. Well, I had a nice two hour break. And now, however, <laughs> almost looks like I took the wrong turn. It almost looks like Death Valley out there. Am I going the wrong way? Nope, still got Crystal Mountain back there. So I guess we're still in Utah. Keep on marching. Up, two, strip, four. Keep it up, two, three. All right, we made our turn off. That means we have about three miles to go. I don't know if I'm gonna all go all those three miles. Um, still pretty warm. I'm going to shift the uh, umbrella to the other side here. Um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? What was I going to say? I was going to say... <laughs> I have no idea what I was going to say. Let me think well, about Good it. morning. Yeah, it's early. It's uh, still about five minutes away from official dawn. And I've been uh, going since 519. Uh, you can't really see it here, huh? Let's see if I can try this here. There, that's a little bit more colorful. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, getting going at five o'clock was still a little bit dark, even on this dirt road here. So I wait about another 15, 20 minutes. And looking for a water here. And then, after that, we've got the ranch, and hopefully I'll get there before the sun gets too high in the sky and too hot. Pretty blues, huh? Dawn is always a nice color. Uh, the orange to the blue. All right, I made a quick stop. <clears throat> Got some water. Thank you again, Bob. Now, let's see if we can get down to the ranch by noon or one o'clock. Sun's already come. You know, it's interesting. The breeze was warm where I was sleeping and I got down here on this road. It's actually pretty cool, but I'm sure once the uh, sun comes up over that uh, ridge there, uh, you can't really see. It's uh, 
going to scorch up pretty fast. That's the first time I've come across one of these signs in all of my uh, travels here that I can call. Doesn't matter if I've been crossing big ranches, little ranches, public grazing land like this. Oh look, there goes a uh, antelope once again. Can't get, get within a quarter mile of those things. So it's uh, almost nine o'clock. The air is a fair temperature, but it's starting to get to that point where the um, we're going to be uh, crossing the equilibrium, and the sun is just going to be overpowering the air to make everything hot. Come a long way so far this morning, and. You know, every time I uh, see this sign, like this, cattle guard, I never see anybody guarding the cattle. You know, usually you might see uh, some guy with a uniform and a badge, or maybe out here you'd see a guy with a cowboy hat on a horse with a rifle. Uh, I've never seen any guards. Oh, this is what <laughs> he was talking about. Okay, you know I must be getting uh, delirious if I'm making dopey jokes like that. <laughs> oh, brother. As you, see, as you can see, I got the shade out. It's almost 1030, so I'm getting ready to take off again. Uh, it's actually pleasant in the shade. <laughs> Once you get into the sun, it's another story. So I've got about 7.1, about, I've got 7.1 miles to go to get to the ranch. I've got uh, 1.6 to get to my next water, but I still have one and a half liters, so I'm okay. Or do I have two and a half liters? I got one and a half liters. So, uh, time to get a move on before the uh, sun starts cooking us. Where is it? It's over there. All right. Hey, do you see that? No? How about now? That's the ranch. Um, heading out there, it's about, uh, how far do you think it is? Well, it's five and a half miles. You know, it's interesting, uh, when you're looking out at uh, distances out here in the desert, I'd consider this a desert right now, they look a lot closer. I remember uh, in college, I went to visit a friend in uh, Phoenix, and uh, she pointed out the mountains out there, the superstitions, I think. And she said, how, how far do you think those are? <laughs> well, I've, I'd had experience, you know, as a kid, hiking out in the deserts, in the mountains, so I said, you know, 30 miles, but, uh, she was expecting me to say 70, which is when you're in the desert, you know, you got the clear air and all, and no haze and stuff. Everything looks a lot closer than what you think it is when you keep walking and walking and walking and walking and walking and walking and walking and, walking and, <laughs> and never seems to get any closer. But this I know, five and a half miles. You know, I just had an aha moment. You know how when you go to the store, you can get pre-cooked meat, right? There's like pre-cooked bacon, there's uh, all that sort of pre-cooked stuff. I now know how they do it. So it's about 96 here in the shade of the umbrella. But the cows out there in the hot sun, it's probably about 120 on their backs, right? So they're just cooking while they're eating. So when, <laughs> so when they get to the uh, slaughterhouse, all the slaughterhouse has to do is just uh, cut the meat up into whatever they need to do and ship it off. It's already cooked. You don't think so? <laughs> well, I'll just ask them down here at the ranch when I get there. 
you'll see. Good afternoon. Did you save me anything to drink? No? Oh, don't be a scaredy cat. You're a cow. Lots of babies. Watch, as soon as I stop, they're all going to scatter. But, uh, how you guys doing, huh? Uh, same to you. Don't worry about it. I'm moving along. Hello. Just moving along. Just moving along. You know, I realized I didn't see anybody yesterday. And then the day before, I only saw one vehicle. And then today, I will only have seen, uh, there's a truck that just went by and whoever's up here at the ranch. It's a solitary way of life, isn't it? <laughs> just walking across America stuff. So here's a good deal. I walked into the uh, ranch here and they were out there uh, uh, getting cows ready. They're gonna take them up to the uh, south pasture or the uh, summer pasture or whatever. <laughs> they're, uh, so anyway, they're just getting them all tagged and uh, everything like that. And as soon as I walked up, I said, hey, can I get some water? And Nikki, hello there, Nikki. Um, said, yeah, you need some water? Yeah, yeah, just go to the house and uh, get whatever you need. And if you want to lay out here on the grass, right there. Take as much time as you want. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Nikki and I think John. And then uh, their son, Jack, uh, actually ran me right up here to the house. So thank you very much at the Wawa Ranch. They got a big spread here. Maybe... Uh, if they get done for the day, I can ask them a little bit of stuff and I can give you a ranch lesson. <laughs> Good morning. Well, it's O-Dark 30, or I should say it's uh, <laughs> maybe O-Dark 31. No, O-Dark 22. That's what it is. It's uh, 522, and you can't see much, but uh, it's been a nice afternoon and a evening and an overnight over here at the uh, Wawa Ranch and thank you very much to Winches and uh, they gave me water, fed me up, let me camp on the uh, on the lawn, lawn last night. Now they're getting up early to go round up the cows and I'm getting up early to get over the pass before the heat. 99 today. 99. Now you may be asking yourself, why are you walking down the middle of the road? <laughs> and the answer is, <laughs> just because I can, man. <laughs> I uh, don't think anyone's coming, except up there, you probably saw that light. Five, uh, 40 something in the morning Lonely stretch of road out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Just because I can. You know, it's interesting when you uh, get a different perspective of places that you've been. I came from there yesterday morning. It certainly looks different than the way it looked yesterday coming down. Well, after the first uh, section of being on the flats, we're uh, beginning the uh, long, slow s climb up to uh, Frisco Summit. Also, I've been looking at the old railroad grade here. And so the old railroad grade is actually going to cross the road up here where I'm getting water and then go down the other side to uh, Milford, basically in a straight line, 
Whereas the road, the, pa the paved road, kind of twists around and then comes like that. So I was thinking of taking a ha, -ha shortcut, <laughs> but but I'm looking over here, and there's been a number of uh, places where there have been um, bridges and trestles that are no longer there. So that uh, I'm sure it's going to be the same thing on the other side. Which means you'd be walking along the, the railroad grade and then, oh, got to go down. Oh, got to climb back up. So, as much as I'm itching to uh, take the railroad grade, there's a shortcut. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I don't think I'll be taking the railroad grade as a shortcut. <laughs> oh, well. I wonder what the psychology of, of that is, you know? Always wanting to find the shortcut, shortcut. Any armchair uh, psychologists out there that want to take a stab at analyzing my behavior? <laughs> now go gentle in the comments. Don't tell me I'm a jerk, but uh, tell me what my uh, deep-seated personality flaw is in trying to always find a shortcut. Okay, just about made it to the top of uh, Prisco Summit. The actual summit is about a quarter mile that way. But the reason I stopped short is because right over there is a historical marker and uh, showing the site of the old town of Frisco, Utah. Uh, Frisco, Utah was, uh, well, typical about the late 1800 uh, booming gold, copper, silver, things like that. Uh, by 1886, the mine had produced over $60 million worth of gold and silver, tungsten, things like that. And what would $60 million be in today's dollars? If anybody wants to calculate that, down in the comments. But yeah, $60 million. Uh, this is the uh, railroad uh, line, the Utah Central Railroad. They went right through here down to Milford. Now, I don't think you can see it, but there's no more trestle. So, no shortcut for me. But anyway, the town in its heyday had uh, like 20 saloons. It was kind of a rough and tumble place. Uh, it was known as the wildest town in the Great Basin. Murders were... Uh, not uncommon. And then uh, there are about 4,000 people that were living here. And then, as with anything, right, the old west, there's boom and bust. So this bust was different. It's not because the ore ran out, but it's because the uh, mine caved in. And so most of the uh, people moved out of the area, uh, leaving only a few to uh, linger around. Until finally in the 20s, they just all disappeared and nothing but wind and dust now. I don't think there's any uh, any ruins except for the charcoal kilns up there. But, uh, so yeah, this is Frisco, Utah. If we do find something on the summit there, I'll show it to you. But uh, Frisco, Utah. Poof, all gone. And speaking of all gone, I'm going to take lunch here and hang around for the afternoon. Probably find a campsite up here somewhere and then uh, make it about 12 or 11 miles down to Milford tomorrow. Well, I stayed up there many, many hours. Had a couple of uh, lunches, or maybe you can call one a breakfast, one a lunch, or you can call them both because I had them both together, call them brunch. And now it's after five o'clock. So I'm coming over on the other side of this mountain here and I figured it would probably be a little bit drier, but uh, just looking for a little juniper tree. You know, my favorite juniper trees. There's one back there, but I want to go a little bit further. Oh, and speaking of which, bum -ba -da -dum, there's tomorrow's goal. That's Milford, Utah. And then you see that road going out to the east uh, into that pass over there. It'll be two days up and over that pass to um, Beaver. But 
I think there might be a problem. You can't see it on camera, but it looks like there might be a little bit of smoke over there. So hopefully that's not a pass. Not a fire. Good morning. It was actually a pretty little spot um, last night up on this hill with a nice view down towards the Milford. It wasn't a perfect spot, but it was a pretty spot. And uh, I think, as I mentioned yesterday, I saw smoke. You can't, there, you don't see anything right now. In that little notch there, where are we? Right in that notch right there, I believe that's my route for tomorrow and uh, the next day. And if there were smoke and flames, I have a feeling I'm gonna have to do a reroute. Um, couldn't find anything last night, so I gotta call the BLM office today and because it's all BLM land out there. So I'll let you know if we gotta make a reroute. If we do, we're gonna have to go south around the mountain. And so instead of being 25 miles, I think it'll be about 31 or 32 miles along the highway from Milford to Beaver. So I'll keep you posted on that. In the meantime, I could not get up this morning. So I will be immediately, the sun's just getting ready to come over the hill here. So I'll immediately be walking in the sun. Oh, but it's only going to be 95 today, not 99. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Well, it's a small world. So far on this road today, I've come across uh, Bill and Edith. Uh, you remember them? I told you about them in Garrison. They were uh, heading into uh, the same direction I'm going. And then uh, just a couple minutes ago, I ran into Nikki from the ranch over there, and she's going back home to town, so uh, <laughs> it's like old home day here today. It seems like Saturday, but it's actually Thursday. I'm all twisted around in my days. Oh, and one more thing, too. Uh, Nikki said, yeah, we found your uh, Instagram. Uh, so... Uh, if you haven't uh, found my Instagram, just go over to Instagram and it's uh, uh, do you, I like Mike dot seven seven. I like Mike dot seven seven. And you know what? While you're hunting around for stuff, you know, right uh, below this video, for most of you, I think there's a button that says Super Thanks. If you ever want to click on that and send me a Super Thanks, that'd be great. Or in the description, I got another couple links. If you want to send me something? Don't feel obligated, and uh, thank you all to you uh, who have already uh, uh, sent me stuff. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And that stuff will uh, help me get something to eat from Milford. What should I get to eat? I don't have any cravings. The other day I had the craving of limes again. I don't have it today. Maybe I'll get a uh, milkshake. Hmm. Milkshake and uh, steak and eggs. Now, yeah, I don't know. Fruit? Ah, <laughs> ah, we'll find out when we get there. Welcome to Milford. And uh, those of you who follow rodeo, I guess you know that uh, Milford's famous for having some uh, world champion uh, Senegal players. Ryder, Jesse, Cody, and Spencer Wright. Rusty Reiner. So, uh, congratulations, guys, and uh, let's see what else Milford has to offer in the form of. Uh, I'm going to camp in the park tonight. First, we got to go eat. Got to go eat. All right. Let's see what we got to offer here, huh? All right, that filled me up for a bit. Some sort of scrambled egg thing with ham and bacon and something or other. Toast, hash browns, salad, soup, uh, apple pie, ice cream, root beer float. Let's take care of it for an hour. In the meantime, I guess we've come a ways, huh? Great Basin National Park, that's where Baker was. Um, but that was by road, so 89 from Great Basin was actually... Uh, it's actually about 93 the way we went on the dirt roads. 
Now I'm gonna go find the park and just hang out there tonight. And it's one of those things where I'm gonna ask forgiveness instead of permission. Forgiveness if anybody says, hey, what are you doing? And I think that's it for the day. Wrapped it up around 1.30, no, 1.45, something like that. And then two days to Beaver, uh, start morning. tomorrow. Had a uh, nice little sleep here in the uh, pavilion of the uh, park here. It's a good thing I didn't sleep on the grass. <laughs> Sprinklers just came on. It's uh, five something, getting out of here before the heat gets up. And uh, I think I already told you um, there's no fire up there, so we can make it up there. Uh, but the route through um, out of Beaver, uh, they're doing some controlled burning. So my planned route is closed. And <laughs> and now I just heard, I just, uh, <laughs> my alternate route, the fire has jumped the burn area, the prescribed burn area. It looks like my alternate's closed. <laughs> so uh, we'll figure it out when we get over there. Anyway, let's go... Uh, Get started. All right, we're making our turn onto it's officially 1300 South Road, but it's also known as the Pass Road. And uh, by the way, if anybody uh, needs an old Dodge truck, I bet you they'd uh, <laughs> let you have it for a price. So uh, down this way, you can turn right a little bit, and then over that notch I think the goal today is just somewhere near the top I don't know if I'm just gonna cut short from the top or go a little bit over the top or stay on the top <laughs> but somewhere near the top tippy top 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 well today I plan to be a slow day but I'm actually surprised how uh, how far I've gone already. This Granite Peak Reservoir is um, I think more than halfway from where I was going to be stopping. So maybe I'll go up to Granite Peak Reservoir. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, like I think I told you before this uh, this total stretch. From Milford to Beaver is about 25 miles. Yeah, let's see what happens. The last hour I was actually pretty fast. And so as you can see, I'm under uh, neath uh, one of my favorite trees, the old um, juniper tree that blocks the wind. In this case, I don't need the wind blocked, so it's the right uh, angle that I've got the breeze blowing and cooling me and um, shade cooling me as well and no crickets what was I gonna say oh but what's also been interesting about the uh, juniper trees in this section between um, basically between Crystal Peak and here is that the uh, juniper trees have had more have had a wide open bottom canopy whereas the um, juniper trees that I've encountered pretty much along uh, the whole section in Nevada they were just um, had the branches all the way down to the ground for the most part, and you just got had had to kind of make your own space underneath. So pretty nice. Um, so I'm gonna sit here for a bit and uh, get some calories in me and some water. That'll get me down to two liters, and I'll have two liters for the rest of the day. And cross our fingers that we uh, <laughs> find water somewhere, uh, somewhere. Otherwise, I got to dry 12 miles tomorrow. <laughs> this was funny. About uh, 50 yards from the summit, I just uh, came from the summit about 50 yards ago. About 50 yards before I got there, <laughs> all of a sudden I was startled because.
because I heard something behind me and it was uh, <laughs> it was a guy it was an old guy <laughs> uh, um, that apparently uh, was just uh, up on a uh, a little exercise hike coming up the mountain uh, from Milford so uh, anyway we got talking and I never asked his name I'm sorry about that if you're watching uh, but we had a nice little chat and uh, what was I going to tell you about this? Oh, so I was planning on getting water. There's water up there at, on the uh, Granite Peak. And he told me, nah, just go down to Choke Cherry. Because I told him where I was going to camp. And he said, that's Choke Cherry. Just go down to Choke Cherry. The water's going to be better down there. And uh, so anyway, I know there's gonna, something else I was going to tell you, but now I've forgotten. <laughs> uh, but anyway. If you're watching, sir, thank you very much for the conversation. And actually, I got to that summit a lot faster than I expected. So now, look at this. We're looking down towards valley, towards... Uh, Beaver's going to be down there somewhere. I think it's going to be off that way. And then uh, my route through there is going to be over there, where the fire is. Howdy. Huh. It's late morning. What's good <laughs> I'm sleeping in. Uh, I can't even see you. There you are. Anyway, um, so I'm trying to decide if I want to come down the mountain to Beaver today or wait till tomorrow. Um, I most likely need to go into the ranger uh, station to uh, find out where the fire is. They gave me, uh, I think I told you they gave me a suggested... Um, Uh, work around to get through it uh, but I need more information from them because on the map it doesn't show that that workaround really connects so I'm trying to decide whether to stay up on the mountain here and just to have a a day and a night for free instead of down in a hotel um, so that's what's going on oh and also too I wanted to say that uh, last night I found this camp spot here it's really just kind of a marginal get on the side of a spur road and, and sleep. It was during the night, or it was during dark, because um, when I was coming down, <laughs> when I was coming down the mountain, I was looking for a spring, and um, I saw a family camp down there, so I asked them, hey, is this the spring? And they said no, and then we got talking, and they gave me uh, some really nice, tasty um, blackberry peach cobbler with whipped cream. All of it's homemade. Um, thank you very much. And we had a little chat, and uh, then I was on my way. Um, oh, they gave me nice cold water, too. That was good. So then I got here at dark. So that's why now I'm just kind of thinking, eh, maybe I'll just stay here. Or maybe I'll move to a little bit better spot, because there are some ants here. And I'm just blab, 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 blabbing. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> you may or may not see me again on this video. Or we may be going into the next video where I'm going through a fire zone or south of a fire zone. Somewhere. Does this make sense? Oh, brother. Hmm. Something tells me I probably shouldn't walk into the middle of this. Hmm.